Alright guys, so this is basically a demonstration of the uh, equipment that we use for p patients with asthma and I'm basically going to follow up to the video I uploaded prior to this uh, just showing you how, how more, giving you more details as to how to proceed when a patient is a tight asthmatic. Uh, like I mentioned before, BLS or 4 ALS, so the BLS here is a uh, narrow breather mask, may it be adult or pediatric, this is an adult one. Uh, you put it here, put it there if a person is in respiratory distress. If you see that they're wheezing and they need uh, medications, then you can start off, like I said, with basic life support. And the next step will be put them on a nebulizer. And this is ipotropium, and you can com combine the ipotropium with the albuterol in case that they meet the six patient rights that I mentioned before. All right, so that's the BLS part. Now, what I mentioned before about combining the mask with the with the uh, non the non rebreather mask along with the nebulizer is I don't want to open it and waste it. But what you could do is you once you put the mask on the person, you pull this off completely, and this right here, you put in there basically and that way the person continues to receive the nebulizer treatment without having to hold it because as you can understand if they're having shortness of breath and they're holding something it's just adding to their stress all right so that's the BLS part you put them on oxygen while you set out everything else up they're on the narrow breather then once this is set up you can, you can plug it there and they can continue to receive the nebulized treatment give it petropium the reason you want to give it petropium, it's uh, anticholinergic, it, it's a muscarinic receptor antagonist, and that helps secrete the, uh, reduce the secretion and the inflammation. And you give that with albuterol, which is a beta-2 agonist, and it helps dilate the bronchioles and helps the person breathe better. All right, that's very scientific, but just so you can have an idea as to why you do that. Now, let's say this is given to people that you meet that let's say they call 911 because their inhaler ran out and they just need a nebulized treatment. You do this, right? Let's say that did not work. These are the other options. You have magnesium sulfate, you have a steroid, and you have epinephrine, okay? Now, how do you choose and how do you, how do you know which one to choose first? These are the instances where you, show, where you use it. If it's a person that the, that the uh, treatment is, is working but not that good and they tell you that they take steroids, they're able to speak in full sentences, then you can do the solimedro. Understand that the solimedro does not work immediately. All right, the other option is dexamethasone. All right, this does not work immediately. It does work, but not immediately. If the person's unable to speak in full sentences, is cool, pale, diaphoretic, and looks like they're about to go in respiratory arrest, then you go to the immediate medications. An example of that is epinephrine 1 to 1000, and the magnesium sulfate is also a medication that works immediately. I mean, not like adenosine where you inject it and it works right away, but it works faster than the solimedrol. All right, so the reason you give the mag sulfate is because it's, it's thought to be a smooth muscle relaxant, and also it's thought to be a calcium antagonist and remember calcium is part of contraction and spasm so uh, asthma is a bronchospasm so basically you're combating the bronchospasm with the magnesium sulfate okay now the way you prepare this you draw it up with the needle take it out of here inject it in here put it on the 60 drop set there's a 60 drop set the tubing and you give it over 10 to 20 minutes all right. The reason you give the solimedro is because the steroid, steroids are anti-inflammatory and this helps reduce the inflammation. And the epinephrine is basically adrenaline. The more adrenaline you have in your body, the more, the better you can perform for strenuous activities. So being short of breath is a strenuous activity. That's why people get sweaty. That's why people have unstable vital signs. So when you give the adrenaline, it acts on alpha and beta receptors, and remember that the lung has beta 2 receptors, and this helps with the breathing also. And this is given also the injection, but these are given, this could be given intermuscularly, and so can this. This is given via IV drip, and this is given via nebulizer, all right? And this could also be given IV.
push or IV bolus, better said. And this is only given, the one to 1,000 concentration is only given intramuscularly, all right? So, repeating, you need relief, but it doesn't have to necessarily be immediate. You give the salimedro along with the nebulized treatment. If you need immediate relief, but the person that has like a cardiac history, you could go with the mag, right? But if you say you need immediate relief and the person has cardiac history, but is an almost respiratory failure, then you give the epi because it's the, the, the benefits outweigh the risk at that point, okay? If they don't respond to this, then they enter what is called status asthmaticus, which is a person who is basically not responding to the treatment you're giving, and then you move to your right, where you can put the person on CPAP. Remember that if you intubate a person, you could potentially uh, call, open them up for infections because it's an invasive procedure, and there's a lot of consequences to a person being intubated and put on a mechanical ventilator. So intubate them if necessary, not just because. You can put the person on CPAP with an inline nebulized treatment, or what some medics don't like to do and others love to do, but well, regardless, you have to do it if necessary, is intubation. We'll intubate the person if the person is not responding to any of this, becomes combative, and is obviously uh, not doing any better. And always remember, keep the person on a cardiac monitor if necessary, especially if they have a cardiac history. Monitor their pulse ox, monitor their EKG, uh, monitor their vital signs, and be sure not to confuse the uh, cardiac wheeze with the respiratory wheeze. And if you do intubate, make sure you put the person on the capnography, the entitled CO2, um, the entitled CO2 detector or whatnot. And that's it. Hey, Dad, I hope this helps. And uh, remember, this, these videos are made for people that are already in the healthcare field and are students or beginners and or just people that want to check out another uh, paramedic's point of view. Right. I hope this helps. Please be sure to share this video with someone that you feel needs it. If you're a student and have any questions, don't feel don't hesitate to ask. I love and enjoy sharing information and it won't be a burden for me to make another video about any other topic that you need to find any information out about. Please remember to like, subscribe, and I should be uploading some videos soon. All right, guys. Have a great day. Peace.